Okay, what I want to show you today is a site that's called Earth Null School. Uh, it's earth.nullschool.net. Um, you can actually go to it, and what it's showing you as the default is the entire visible side of the Earth, sort of centered on uh, the equator, um, close to the Amazon Delta. Um, so we actually see a lot. Of, we see half of half of the northern hemisphere and half of half of the southern hemisphere. And if you take a look, there's North America, here's the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and what this is showing you is wind. Um, you can actually zoom into it. Uh, it takes a little while for it to get up, but we can zoom in. Let's actually look at the uh, tropics uh, where we get most of the wind coming off Africa, uh, bringing dust out of the African desert. And you can see the wind that's coming out. You can see that the wind's coming up from southern Africa. You can see it um, actually colliding right here. This is called the intertropical convergent zone. And because it's summer, um, late summer, it's still higher than the equator. This will eventually move down to the equator sometime September, or later in September and October. And then it'll eventually move down. Um, it is. Uh, an area where you can see air colliding, you can see it on this side as well. Uh, we can move up to North America and we can even zoom into this is the Chesapeake Bay. Um, that's the Potomac River right there. So we can zoom in and we can actually click and find out that the, the air, now this is uh, upper air, it's moving at 22 kilometers per hour. But it basically will well, you know, shows you why our wind comes or why our weather comes in from the west for the most part. What you can do um, is you can change the map type. So, and this shows up much better if we actually go over um, and we take a look at the whole globe. But you can change the map type. So this one's now centered at the pole. Uh, we can center at the equator. I'm giving you a totally cool look, a look that you may actually know a little bit more if we do the equatorial view. And you can see the lines get a little confused up there. But um, basically, you get uh, lows that move counterclockwise, and you get highs, which tend to not have as much wind uh, moving in a clockwise direction. And I'm having trouble seeing any of those. I guess the high would be right there. You can sort of see a clockwise spin. Um, there's a beautiful counterclockwise, and that's probably a hurricane. Um, you can actually go through, I don't know what this one is called. Okay, that's the default. Go to another polar. Uh, nope, that's not polar. And I'm trying to see if it says it anywhere. But they've got some just funky maps in here, too. Like, what the heck is that? Or this one. I guess that's probably a very good uh, three-dimensional globe cut into sections. And then that one probably is a nice looking view also. But if you don't want to look at the air, you can actually look at the ocean. Um, and it's going to flip over to waves. And I'm going to minimize that. And we're going to actually go look at some of these waves. And you have to assume that the orange um, down here and I don't know why they're not getting closer to Antarctica because or to up here in the poles, but let's actually zoom into this section and see what this orangish color looks like. Okay, so what you can do is you can click into it and you can actually see these are 9.81 meters high. 10 meters, uh, like 40 feet, and understand why this area of South America, where Antarctica goes up, uh, why ships didn't want to travel down here if they could help it. But again, this is pretty good uh, whale country because of all the plankton. Um, just got a text from my daughter, so I'm trying to respond back. I'm trying to make something tonight, and she got some stuff for me. So give me a second here. Okay, so if I 
can go back to, let me just go back to weather, let me go back to earth and I'll go back to the default setting. Because what I can also do is I can go into here and I can say ocean and we can pick currents. And this is the picture that I actually took for the Gulf Stream for a, a oceanography PowerPoint. But you can see other currents that are down here. We can spin the globe and actually look over toward Indonesia, which historically has some of the fastest currents. And we can zoom in and find out that they've got water in some of these places that's actually moving at 2 meters per second, 2.21 meters per second. And again, I don't know why it's not showing me. There's 3.8 meters per second. That's not in. There's 3.64, 2.3. Trying to see if I can find the really fast moving water because um, I found much faster than this. But it could also be due to the storms that they either have or don't have. Uh, storms moving in opposite direction of normal motion can have a slowing effect of these currents. But you can see that uh, Indonesia has pretty fast moving water uh, with all the red. Okay, I think that's probably a pretty good show. So this is earth.nullschool.net where if you click earth you can do lots of different things. You can even go farther up into uh, the atmosphere if you wish. So this is actually wind at the surface or close to it. Uh, you can turn on, uh, go up higher, and notice that the wind is going to change. It also speeds up. And let's go take a peek at that uh, hurricane, which should be out here somewhere. And let me zoom out. There were three of them out here earlier, uh, like two weeks ago. Okay, there he is. She. Actually, I don't know what he's, he or she is called. So let me move it more toward the center. Let's see if we can zoom in. And we're up at higher altitudes, and if we click this, we can find out that it's moving at 118 kilometers per hour. Get closer, still 118, 113, 117, 107. Okay, that's not near as strong as what I thought, but if you take a look, beautiful counterclockwise motion, and those make what are called cyclones. Um, that's a clockwise, so if we, we had a weather map, we'd have a big uh, red L there, and we'd have a big blue H, so we've got air falling. Now if we go back to the surface, let's see if we can find faster air. 85 kilometers. So let's see if we can go 10 hectares. Uh, hectopark parcels, which actually is pretty high in the alpha. Uh, you don't see any evidence of that hurricane. This is really high in the atmosphere, uh, higher than you could go with uh, any any uh, airplane or thing that didn't have compressed air. And you don't really get to start seeing that hurricane motion. Uh, they're actually at 250 hectoparcels. And this is actually jet streams. So this is actually where the jets flow. And this is the flow, if you look at North America, this is the flow of the jet stream over North America. And you can see it takes a big dive here. And this is what's actually bringing us the colder air for right now. Uh, probably have warmer air in the middle part of the country. Uh, this is the really cold air that can't make it through, but we've got some pretty high wind speeds, 161 kilometers, 190 kilometers, 192, 83, 203. Uh, so you can actually see uh, lots of weather and maybe have a good chance of starting to predict things. Earth.nullschool.net. Okay, thank you.